Welcome to Conspiracy Crypto Pirates, episode 18. Yeah. How's it going, first matey? Not too bad. Awesome. Good week? Mm, could be better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little shoulder injury do we have? Maybe. <laughs> hey, can, let's just do a little practice. Raise your arms up in the air. <laughs> Both hands. Let's do the wave. <laughs> uh, I'm enjoying your pain too much. You are. <laughs> Sweeping the decks is difficult. <laughs> yeah, this is the only week you're not going to have to sweep the deck. Next week is back to normal schedule. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be healed that quickly. <laughs> Unless you have a doctor's note, <laughs> then you're sweeping the deck. I'll be able to get one <laughs> right away. <laughs> right away. Um, you know how you, you want a Tesla Cybertruck? Oh, okay. There's a product for you. There is. There is. So you know how Tesla does these um, <clears throat> like special the events? Yeah, flamethrowers or the belt buckle. Belt buckle tequilas. Okay. Oh, they even did like a surfboard one year. Oh. Yeah. It was an expensive surfboard too. <laughs> really? Yeah. I was like, maybe I should have gotten that. Then you're like, okay. <laughs> I've only been surfing once in my life and I want a Tesla surfboard. <laughs> um doesn't but, float. It just sings. Yeah, I don't even think it was like electric or anything. You think <laughs> it should have something like electric, right? But this year they did um, Tesla, Tesla Cybertruck styled or influenced sledgehammers. <laughs> you want to see a picture? I do. So here is a close up of it. Ooh, yeah. That's kind of, kind of, that's kind of. Well, there, it, there's a like up close and personal picture. I'll, okay. We'll put pictures on yeah, the video yeah, yeah. for the rest it's of the It's not half bad. It's not half bad, but. I mean, it's a styling sledgehammer, but <laughs> right? I was expecting more like the shape of a cyber truck. Well, that, to be the top with of it. it is kind the of. The top, you see it's kind influenced. Of influenced. It's not like, it's not exactly it, like it. It's still got to be it's usable. It's not aerodynamic. <laughs> Like the Tesla is. <laughs> well, maybe it is because you need aerodynamic as you slam down. Mm. But I just think it's funny because the sledgehammer. I was thinking about their swing sideways that they yeah. did. <laughs> With the sledgehammer? Yeah. This one's probably specially designed so it won't crack the <laughs> windshield. They have a, um, what is it called? A uh, cyber truck um, influenced ball bearing for you to throw. <laughs> Yeah, that's squishy. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll break the glass. <laughs> yeah, they're what? They release their the cyber truck and they're supposed to have the window and they're like, oh, let's throw a bites ball at it. You're just oh, like, it, really? Yeah, last... they threw it like a girl. It was just like, yeah. okay. Like, I could get you throwing like a girl when you have like this heavy 15, 10, 15 yeah. pound, 5 pound ball bearing, yeah. full, solid steel, and right. it's like thud. And right. now it's just like, I think this time he was terrified of breaking the window. So he's like, Still, you got it. I know, you, you gotta, gotta. You have to, like, yeah, perform. That was weak. Because that was just like, okay, that was complete letdown. I'd yeah. rather see you throw the same ball bearing and have it crack and do the exact same right. thing. Do they actually change the window and make it a regular window? Honestly, that I don't know. I don't, well, I don't think they made a w regular window because I don't think they would have thrown anything at it. I mean, at the speed well, that you at threw the it speed at, he did yes. I mean, maybe not but... Ford, but maybe Toyota would have passed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think I still think it is somewhat um, sturdy, crack resistant, or whatever it's supposed yeah. to be. But yeah, I think he probably got more memes made out of him <laughs> throwing like a girl than <laughs> the actual Cybertruck right? cracking. Um, but last week we did a little wager mm -hmm. with um, our what was it ten thousand dollars of um, investing in a crypto. Okay. And do you remember what crypto you had last week? It was Shiba Inu. Yeah, you had Shiba Inu last week, and I had Dogecoin. Doge did good. Doge did do good. That's why yeah. I chose it. <laughs> so who do you think won? I don't know. I haven't checked. Well, because honestly, I always usually, like the surprise. Usually, the, all the dog coins kind of move Go. in conjunction okay. with each other, uh, and usually one does outperform slightly, but they're usually all in the same wave. Mm -hmm. So. 
Shiba Inu. So your ten thousand. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. Your ten thousand dollars that you invested last week. Okay. Turned to ten thousand nine hundred and fifty-two dollars. Uh, I definitely lost then. No, oh, but you made like almost a thousand bucks. Ten percent in a still, week's not bad. We're we're still <laughs> trying to outdo each other. It's a competition. Right. I made. <laughs> No, my ten thousand uh, turned to eleven thousand seven hundred and thirty-one. Okay, not as good as I was thinking. Yeah, I thought you went up closer to like twenty twenty-five percent instead of a seventeen percent. Yeah, which... it's, yeah. It, I so I think if we measured it yesterday, I think it probably would have been closer to that twenty-five percent. I think today it dropped a slightly uh, okay. slight amount because I think I saw it. Even today, I think I saw it at like 20 or 21 cents. Now, when I checked right before, it was like 19.5. Okay. But anyway, so um, so I won this week. You won the first week. Mm-hmm. Kind of both lost, but we, you won. You lost less. <laughs> yes, I'm a better investor when... We'll a- we'll average it out at the end of the month. <laughs> um, what do you want to invest in next or this week okay. for next week? So I'm going to invest in bomb. Bomb. B O M B. B O M B. B O M B. Do you know anything about bomb? I tried looking it up real quick, yeah. and the set I had was just saying random, like, oh, this is the value of it, like, nothing, no backstory of it. So, it, no. it could be an explosive investment. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> but I think... It was one of the top moving today, movers today. Which means it won't move again. <laughs> no, it's cheesy. Here's my philosophy. Yeah. If the markets are going to go up, and there's already momentum on it, so I'm betting the market's going to go up yeah. again this week. Yeah. So that's why I chose a high mover, hoping that it's going to continue, continue the high move. Smart. So I th- high risk, high reward, right? We, right. And I'm going to be boring this week. I'm going to choose Dogecoin again, just because, um, just kind of what I've been boring. seeing. I know. Um they, I think Dogecoin is going to be like thirty cents potentially in a week. Whoa. Maybe two weeks. That's a movement. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, I think I'll stick with Doge. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that will be interesting to see if it hits thirty right. cents because I mean, four years I ago, mean, I'm already at what twenty one fifty six when we checked. Twenty one fifty. Oh, for bomb. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot. So the prices of bomb right now is twenty one fifty six, like you said, and Doge is at like nineteen five. Yeah, and that's all cents. That's... Yeah, tw- twenty one fifty. Yeah, twenty one cents. Twenty one point fifty six. Yes, cents. <laughs> yes. If you want, so zero dot two one <laughs> five six. Um, but yeah. This should be an interesting week, to say the least. Because next week, so this week, okay, so next week when we come back, mm-hmm. um, it will be into the first week of April, because when you see this, it will be later. Um, yeah, you'll see this. The, when will this come out? What? This will come out the week, uh, so this will come out the 5th of April. Okay. So anyway, um, that will be interesting to see because like April, there's a lot of things supposedly happening in April, just in kind of general, um, just around the world. <laughs> just in general with cryptos or just news everything general? like news, crypto, um, you have like there's a lot like right now of XRP. Um, they're like the courts are actually doing stuff right now. Yeah. Um, with XRP as far as they think there could be a settlement very, very, very soon because they're actually talking, talking and they doing weren't stuff. talking beforehand. Gary Ginzer is like, you owe us everything. And they're just like, no. Yeah. And then there was like some judgment things pass like, oh, they're going to pay this much. And then, oh, they might be settling. It's still, I feel like 
the smoke is still in the air with the whole thing and it hasn't settled. So I think even potentially in a week, we might find out more on the settlement issue. Yeah, I should have chose XRP then. But I don't know if XRP is going to jump or not. Yeah. Like with the settlement, like yet. Because oh, that's another interesting. So something came out with XRP. 15 of the largest banks in the world, so the 15 largest banks in the world, have been doing stuff with XRP. Okay. Um, the Like using it officially or just kind of dabbling in it? I believe officially, unofficially. <laughs> officially, unofficially. Like testing, like testing it to get okay. it ready to ramp up, basically. Okay. Um, Federal Reserve is supposedly like testing it and like in the works of potentially, potentially doing their CBDC within 12 to um, 18 months. I do not like CBDCs. I know. So, I don't know. With all that, it's a lot is, of speculation. Once they say, hey, we're doing CBDCs, then either they're going to have to outlaw all cryptos because, like, in what is it? Was it in Nigeria? They went to a complete CBDC and everybody just uses Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. But then you kind of wonder well, being Nigeria, it, what if it was um, like, if they were using something more stable, like U.S. dollar, I don't know how stable the Nigerian well, dollar so was they, originally. Like before. They still have a little bit of paper money, but you can only pull out like $2 a day or something like yeah, that. Like so it like, was something ridiculous that it's like pretty much either you have to have it in your hand. Right. And when CBDs come out in America, it's when you say 12 months, that's after the election and after the switch of the presidency. So... That makes it very iffy. I know. That's why I keep. Why I saw that, and I was like, "That's interesting with presidency because, like, you don't know who's going to be president at the mm -hmm. time, and if honestly, will that make a difference?" With, I, I mean, yeah. we kind of got well, into the federal you switch, reserve. Um, why wouldn't you just use back and forth XRP and skip the CBDC? Unless it was illegal. Basically, they. Every country is going to have their CBDC, and then XRP is going to be the bridge currency. Yeah. So, like, it would be... It wouldn't... But XRP, would you they would be facilitating... So, it's kind of like Dogecoin. They would be using the infrastructure of XRP for the CBDCs. Yes. And so, with that, like, that's a scary aspect of that. Right. But I like... Like, I'm very skeptical of it. Mm -hmm. If they set up good rules and ground rules of everything, like, it could potentially be okay. Yeah. But there's so much power involved in that that I don't really... Like, each country is going to be slightly different. Right. And I'd rather be using what the na nation states are using and what the banks are using because they're going to allow themselves... Um, Pretty much freedom to do yeah. their activities and not be watched 24-7. I just, like, I prefer my freedom over, um, like Benjamin Franklin said. I think it was Benjamin Franklin that said, those who give up freedom for safety mm. deserve neither and will get neither. Right. And yeah. So it's like, you got to be responsible for your own self. And if you give your responsibility up for freedom. Right. It's like, I think it was Don Lennon that was interviewing Elon Musk. I think Don Lennon. And he he was like, <laughs> so, um, are you going to put up rules and regulations on, like, Twitter that go, or X now, mm -hmm. that go above and beyond, like, the rules and laws of the nations? And he's like, no. He's like, you're for censorship. He's like, no, I'm not. It's like, yes, you are. <laughs> like, he was just like, <laughs> Elon Musk was just pounding them. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> and I mean, he was uh, good on camera. So he's like, no, no, I, I, I agree with you. And like, one of the main points that Elon Musk made is that it's not freedom of speech if someone you disagree, unless someone that you disagree with is able to say something. Right. 100%.
And so it's like, yeah, you may disagree with it. It may be wrong information, but is it the nation state's goal to determine what, like, just, let's just say, um, we have, um, Mother Teresa that's ruling, Teresa. that's the president of the United States, mm. and they get to decide what is and what isn't, yeah. um, safe and true for the public. Yeah. And then after Mother Teresa comes in, because it's, that's pretty much an all-consuming power that you're right. giving them, Putin comes in. Mm -hmm. Are you going to want Putin to right. determine what you can and cannot say? No. It, it really comes yeah. down to... Who's in power when... Yeah, you might have a nice swings. person at one point, but once that pendulum swings, and we've seen it throughout all of history, mm -hmm. that... You get one, one good ruler and like ten bad ones, and the one good ruler. Yeah. Why would you want to give all consuming power to that one good ruler when 100%. you wouldn't have the next ten come and slap you in the face right. with it every single time? Exactly. Exactly. That reminds me of a story. <laughs> this is a great transition. Um, have you heard of the tick? Talk. <laughs> Hilarious name. Have you heard of the TikTok? I can't even say it. The TikTok detectives. There we go. No. Say that three times fast. TikTok detective. TikTok detective. TikTok detective. Yeah, I just did. Actually going to do it. Wow. Uh, so, um, in Nashville, Tennessee. Okay. For um, I guess there's like spring break happening around. Okay. Those parts or whatever. Didn't Florida like close down spring break? Like this year? In their beaches, they're just like, yeah, no more like no idea. charging an arm and a leg for parking and trying to do as <laughs> much as they can to keep it down. I don't know. So it might have moved to Nashville. Yeah, probably did. <laughs> so um, in Nashville, in the downtown scene or whatever, um, okay. basically there was a guy. So boots that, and bars? Yes. Okay. There was a guy in a bar, whatever. On like spring said, break, and he, probably he gets on. probably he gets kicked out of the bar for I don't know what. He goes to the boot store. Well, he disappears. Easy to do in a boot <laughs> store. <laughs> anyway, so he disappears. Um, you know, the next next day rolls around. His fellow compatriots <laughs> um, are looking for him. Don't know where he is, so they call the police and everything. Okay. And basically, manhunt ensues. They can't find him. They ping his phone, and they find um, his phone down by the river. It's uh, never a good place to find a phone. Exactly. So, but he's still missing. And besides that, there's no evidence. Um, the uh, police were searching for like nine days, and this whole story, because it's on spring break, and there's a lot of young people around there. Becomes big on TikTok. And so then, you know, true crime stuff is really big right now. <laughs> and so, like, everybody's like a being detective, a detective. Like they're just like, <laughs> yeah. So then you got all these, yeah, TikTokers. These two girls found more evidence than the police have in nine days. <laughs> they found his um, credit card also down by the beach somewhere okay. as well. Um, and like the detectives like for nine days couldn't find any more <laughs> evidence and they found more evidence. So to my knowledge, they still haven't found him or anything else yet. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could probably guess what happened, but I don't know. I, who knows? Swim with boots on. Yeah. Never swim with <laughs> boots on. That's the moral of the story. But um, it was just kind of the, the big thing was like, OK, there we're paying this big budget to this whole police department. And yet these TikTok girls can find more evidence than the police department. That's that's their full time job. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, kind of humorous in a way, but sad. Yeah. I'm talking about crime. Yes. So crime. I have, I have a life of crime. <laughs> <laughs> so Hello, things that happened in the past that would definitely get you jailed today. Okay. So like that was okay to do in the past. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, maybe I don't know. Okay. I found these photos. Hit so, me with it. 
All right, so, and also this one, I found Andrew Tate as a three-year-old. <laughs> His name was changed back then to Robert Quigley. Okay. But here's Andrew Tate as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> you have it on record. Andrew Tate. That will definitely get you jailed. What? Well, should we explain in words for our listeners? <laughs> <laughs> for our listeners on our shorts? Sure. Yeah. So it was this like little kid with curly hair just puffing away on a giant cigar. It's massive. For a three-year-old. <laughs> yeah, it looks massive compared <laughs> to a three-year-old. It's like a... Sitting on like a chair fit for him perfectly. <laughs> Crossed legs and everything. Okay, that would probably jail the parent. <laughs> okay. So next one is... Using uh, like a laundry <laughs> basket or a garbage can <laughs> to help keep your, keep kid, your kid in order. So has, it's a lady at a park with like an upside down trash can that's like yeah. holy. Yeah. That's hilarious. It's, the comment says, mother contains her baby with a trash can while she croquets. <laughs> All right. That's funny. Next one is even more dangerous. <laughs> they got a caged baby out a window. Yeah. So like free fall, like you like, can see houses down below. Yeah, it's like a like a, a ways away below. Yeah. Like it's like maybe. A, not a skyscraper, but like a multi-story building. Yeah, like five stories high, maybe. Well, it's just a window open that they have a plank out and like chicken wire and caging yeah. it, and then there's this like baby. Hanging out. Right. That's hilarious. It's initially was called the health cage. Um, <laughs> Probably to get sunlight. So and I'm stuff. assuming if it's the health cage, doctors were recommending sticking your babies out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Probably so they get like vitamin D or something. I think, yeah, it was saying something about vitamin D. I think in more research that I was yeah. doing. That's hilarious. All righty. Now for the next one. Sorry. You're good. Okay. This one would definitely <laughs> get you <laughs> jailed in the 1920s. <laughs> learning to swim in the 1920s? You got these. It was hazardous. Quick learning curve. They've got like a giant fishing pole with a rope tied around the neck of the kids? Yes. <laughs> if your swimming teacher doesn't want to get wet, Wow. This is the method to go back to. <laughs> okay. And then here's the next one. Babies sleep outside in Moscow, 1958. The practice is thought to boost their immune system. Oh, it's just snowy and they're sleeping yeah. in cots outside. <laughs> At first I was like, okay, baby's sleeping, but I didn't. Yeah, baby's sleeping in the snow. <laughs> All I mean, they're all bundled up. But. but still, yeah, you wouldn't think that that would be. And so, yes, after that, and they got a little cough. One night, trade market, cough syrup. So Each this is cough syrup. Check out the ingredients of cough syrup manufacturing in Baltimore back in 1888. They used chloroform, marijuana, and morphine. <laughs> that is... And alcohol. Those are the four oh, ingredients oh, yeah, they used. Oh, yeah, alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that... You have a cough? Here's some morphine. <laughs> <laughs> and alcohol. And <laughs> marijuana. And, <laughs> and chloroform. <laughs> like, the side effects of chloroform... Doesn't that put you out? Like... Like, yeah, they use it in medical to put you out, but... Um... Here we go. Oh. Um, chloroform is a colorless liquid that turns into gas quickly. It can harm the eyes, skin, liver, kidney, and nervous system. It's also <laughs> known to cause cancer. Well, everything causes cancer so these days. So you're, you're just chugging that away <laughs> for your cough. <laughs> <laughs> huh, sounds familiar. All right. Get... Get rid of that tickle in your throat. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Mama, I got a tickle. <laughs> so do you think the haircut styles for men in the 1970s were worse? Or 70s. 1970s. Okay. Or in 1895? 1895. Well, I would say probably the 70s were worse. They're probably crazier. Okay. All right. Iconic 70 haircuts. Okay. okay. So. <laughs> I wasn't expecting a crescent moon. <laughs> crescent moon haircut. <laughs> you got the little whoop and, and the, the little goatee. <laughs> I shouldn't have trimmed my beard out. No. I should have grown it out yeah, more. Yeah, you should have crescent that bad boy. Man, just imagine how long you would have to be working that, like all day to get it to stick like that. Man, unless did they use product? They must have had some sort of product. Yeah, <laughs> to get it to do that? They probably used a whale blubber. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. did you know? Or moonshine or chloroform. <laughs> <laughs> Mixed with... Whale blubber. No, that's after you get the cough from <laughs> inhaling the whale blubber. <laughs> so, you know Jeff Bezos? Yeah. He's not an original person. So, okay. you know, the two-day delivery and all that. Oh, okay, yeah. So, in 1929. Okay. 1929. They had Amazon on foot. A mailman delivering Christmas mail. Wow. He's got, like, a giant thing on his front and back. Yeah. What kind of packages are those? I don't know. Yeah. Like probably books and like paintings. Books the and... size of like three foot scrolls? Maybe some pictures. Maybe some people got some family photos, black and white, you okay. know, solid black and white. Like good stuff. I was thinking, well, package, packages wouldn't change. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> so do you remember watching the movie Herbie? Yes. Yeah. Which well, one of the millions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Herbie. it wasn't the first one to Maybe. do a wheelie. This was the first documented, known documentation of a wheelie on a vehicle. It's like a Model T. Yeah. Do I they wonder, just get a ton of weight in the back? I think they got and, a bunch of people and like leaned back while yeah. they gunned it. Well, I wouldn't but, think gunning it would pull it back much <laughs> in a Model A or T or whatever. All right. That's crazy. All right, should I go more or no? It's up to you. You can save a couple for later. Okay, well, for next time we'll save why men die. Well, you can show me if you want. All right. If you got it. So, okay, have you ever heard of... Oh, yes. Sorry. Um, heard lots of it. Woltek the Bear? No. Woltek? So, Woltek. Whoa, tech. W O J T E K. Whoa, tech. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I have not. So, we'll take the bear. He fought during World War II. Okay. An actual bear? An actual bear. Fought in World War II? Pretty impressive, right? What did he do? Probably used him for a sniffer or a climber or just mauling capabilities. Wow. Just imagine. <laughs> you see this big bear just like barreling down. You're like, ah! <laughs> I have no clue. Each what they one of used these would for. be a great story to do more research on and make a short mm -hmm. out of. Yeah. Like, so, Wo Tech the Bear. Yeah. You want to know what's also, that's a very dangerous occupation, training a bear for war. Uh, yeah, I bet. Yeah. Maul. Uh, you know, like well, a dog, you have those big dogs, you just put a bear, just like, boom! I was going to say, it might be a very easy job because it comes naturally. <laughs> <laughs> so Release the bears. Um, That's awesome. You want to know also what's a very dangerous occupation? What's that? Um, being a mobster. Um, Makes sense. Um, hiding from the cameras during Al Capone's trial. <laughs> Everyone oh. just like... <laughs> Just yeah. like hiding, just like picture nope. time. Like nope. you see, like two guys in the back, just like <laughs> like okay, those are the honest guys. Yeah, or those are the guys that are dead, <laughs> right? That's hilarious. So there's also a job that you can go to. Ooh, okay, that they worked really hard on saving your back, and you can bring your own dog. Wow, sounds like a very um, yes reformed company. 
Yes, French knife grinders, 1902. Knife grinders? They were laying on their stomachs, grinding knives down, and then they had their dogs just laying in the back. That is why... Why would their dogs... Why would they bring... I don't know why they would bring their dogs to work. But, it's, I it's mean... French. Well, it's what's funny France. is, like, that all... Like, there was, like, three guys lined up, and all three mm -hmm. dogs were, like, laying the same way on their backs. <laughs> That's hilarious. Huh. Okay. That's... Also very dangerous. I didn't think you would think this is dangerous. Okay. But a librarian. Very dangerous occupation. I see that. Oh, wow. It's, like... Three stories up on a bookshelf? Yeah, and there's like three more stories to go. Oh, man. How... Or one or two more. Wow. But yeah, just imagine being the librarian and stumbling. Imagine trying to find a book. <laughs> <laughs> or try and find where to put it back. Oh. Where's the missing slot? <laughs> it's all alphabetized. <laughs> I'd be like, shoot me now. <laughs> Right? Dang it. Oh, I climbed up man. all the way to the top corner. It's the wrong one. Oh, that would be horrible. Could you imagine being a librarian there? <laughs> no. So, you know the golf carts that go and collect the golf balls at the driving range? Sure. Well, take a step back. You know, today, yeah. when you see those things out, everyone's aiming for yeah. it. <laughs> of course. Well... Just imagine being that guy driving that vehicle mm -hmm. and your propel your the way you move is by your legs. <laughs> and everyone's aiming at you. <laughs> He's got like uh chain mail chain mail yeah like I would... chicken cage around his torso and head and his legs, good luck. Right? <laughs> But back then, it was probably Joe to aim for the poor boy. <laughs> what? <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Four. Four. <laughs> hmm. All right. So medicine back oh. in the day. Okay. Has we've come a long ways. Shock therapy. They probably still do it. Oh, well, they sell man. you shock therapy, but you don't put all fours in a tub of <laughs> that water. water and then hook you up to the main. <laughs> oh, man. Mm. And then this is adding to the statistics. This isn't a job. Okay. But if you need to go fast, just wow. hook a rocket to your scooter. There you go. In 1931, they had scooters in 1931? Right. That's impressive. I didn't know that. Right. I'm just impressed that the kid had a rocket. Well, yeah. But, uh, in 1931? Like, right? we hadn't even gone to the moon yet. And the kid's That's str true. strapping on a <laughs> rocket. Just like... <laughs> Is that Volno Von Braun? <laughs> wow, that is very impressive. I'm impressed. Yeah. All right, last one. Okay. You can ride in style with uh, zebras. zebras pulling your chariot. Or your carriage. Carriage. Wow. That that's that's some Buckingham that's, Palace right there. Yeah. I was gonna say that is I was gonna say modern day, but um <laughs> previous day Land Rovers. <laughs> oh also, one yeah. more. So you said old one. fashioned hearing aids. Okay. Guess what they looked like? They're like a big horn. This kinda is Okay. <laughs> That's a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> so this guy's job was during, um, I forget what war. Aircraft war, radar. But listening to for Motors. airplanes uh, yeah, uh, up in the sky. They're like giant. Like, right? <laughs> Man. Just imagine a bird flying by and tweet, tweet. Ah! Right? <laughs> wow. I wonder if they were like tuned, especially for like to pick up. Like, tuned in the fact, like, if a bird huh. went tweet-tweet, like, it wouldn't blow his eardrums out. But, like, it was tuned to get the frequency of, like, a low hum or something. I don't know. It's above my pay grade. It is above they your pay grade. They don't worry about their ears, to be honest. Probably back then. Just launch it. Like, I always think that, like, World War One, World War Two, like, 
you know how loud guns are, like shooting. Mm. Everybody in the war must have right. not been able to hear. And also, it's not like they used a small caliber. No, they were huge. They used a thirty six. Yeah. Like 308, which was small. Yeah. I mean, their ears. But that's what's <laughs> funny is you don't really hear about You don't really hear about that. <laughs> like, I'm not intended on that one. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's never like uh, a subject that was brought up. Like, yeah, after the war, no one could hear. Yeah. Well, they probably heard lots of ringing. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to get that? <laughs> it's the bells. <laughs> 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 they were healing. Maybe after World War II they had the problem, but not before. Exactly. They went to the churches and got healed by Maybe. the dawn. Well, the every single hour was healing hour. Yeah, exactly. So, the first satellites. First satellites, okay. So, do you know what the first... Uh, so, one of the first satellites, not the very first satellite, because the first satellite was basically worthless, and, like, we got it into space. Okay. So, like, the first useful satellites that were okay. used for, like, reconnaissance... Do you know how they actually, like, worked? Um, they had monkeys. <laughs> no. So okay. the first satellites, you know, they shot them into space, and they install basically, like, telescopes and cameras onto it so okay. that they could do reconnaissance and spy work. Was it a digital camera? No. <laughs> Get this. So the way they did it was after taking the pictures, mm -hmm. they would parachute the wet film because it had to be wet and stay liquid parachute it from the satellite and it would float down to earth now remember this is taking enemy stuff then they would have um military pilots fly and somehow catch the film before it hits the ground that cool and then bring it back develop it and look at their pictures <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of kind of like the way of ex extracting people during like the vietnam war yeah like if they had a person that they needed to like they captured somebody behind enemy lines yeah they would hook them up to the big huge bungee cord and they would shoot up the bungee cord up and the plane would be carrying a tow hook oh my. and catch it and then <laughs> and then they would just pull them in but it feels... just imagine being that guy just like no <laughs> no when they just go like ripping through the jungle <laughs> <laughs> would they die no i mean it worked uh, i mean just imagine a bungee cord yeah and you're not free falling you're <laughs> yeah but... <laughs> so they wouldn't even have to have anybody pull them up they just <laughs> land in the chopper or in the airplane right you go up. do a bombing run and then go do a low run and then <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy i've never heard of that yeah. That's really fun. <laughs> I'm surprised it's not like a, um, I mean, it's a, a Red Bull. Ops. A Red Bull sport these days. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's a little more high risk than, like, but if he's going to be yelling and shouting behind enemy lines while you're trying to sneak him out, like, right. It's easier just to <laughs> bungee him out. <laughs> <laughs> so. Did you know that eagles can live up to 70 years? No. Yeah. But what's interesting is after 40 years, they they get kind of old, and their, like, beaks are, like, breaking down, and their mm. claws are, like, not as sharp and stuff, so they're, like, old men. And at 40 years, basically, they have to make a decision on whether they want to basically die huh. or they can like fly up into the mountains for 150 days and basically peck at the rocks until their beak falls off and then they grow a new beak and when they grow a new beak then they pluck their old claws out so it's a very painful process hmm. so new claws will grow and then they so why they only live to 70 they're just like no nope, i'm not doing that one again <laughs> right probably and then they pluck all their feathers out and new ones grow no way so then when they come back after 150 days they're like what you call man strength <laughs> they're just like ready to rock <laughs> they're just like yeah 
<laughs> so yeah, and then they can live up to another thirty years after so that. So then they, they they fly up into the mountains. So the, do they fly back down into the mountains to live the rest of their life? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess so. I assume they go back down to their families. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was kind of an interesting, cool narrative yeah. around that. Should we be the first pirates that have an eagle on our Ooh, shoulder? instead of a parrot? Maybe we should. Maybe we should. We're American pirates. Mm, there we go. From the Great North. And we can change the name from the crow's nest to the eagle's nest. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Germans already took that one. <laughs> so, <clears throat> changing gears a little bit. Okay. I have a job opportunity for you. Another one. Another job opportunity. Okay. I kind of so, accidentally passed that last one. I know you shouldn't have. There was way too many people applying after we <laughs> let them know. It was, yeah, phenomenal. This one, you can tell me if you're interested or not. Okay. It pays $130,000 a day. Okay. Someone interested? Like, do I have to, like, sign up for a certain amount of days, or can I just go day by day? <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, I feel like it. Right. Okay. So, and it's a relatively simple job. It's similar to the last one, where all you have to do is change a light bulb. Oh. Yeah, not too bad. But the problem is the What's light bulb. the downside? <laughs> the downside is it's not, it's far down. Because oh. you're changing light bulbs on, like, radio towers and, like, oh. all the towers. It's up there. I thought when you said it's far down, when you're up there, you look, it's far yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were going down into tunnels and changing <laughs> light bulbs. No. So these um, these towers are up to, like, 200 stories tall. Where? And throughout the United States. There's, just, I mean, there's radio towers. Have you ever heard of AM radio? Okay. But, um... <laughs> and going back to AM. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it might not be a lasting job. You got to do it quick if you jump on it if you want it. Right. So um, basically, they have no. There's a lot of these towers, the really tall ones, are more scaffolding type towers, like radio towers, not like mm -hmm. there's no elevators or stairs. It's literally like climbing like a tree all the way up. And like you have like basically a harness hook and, and everything. Does it take you like 150 days to get up and it back take, down? Actually it takes You're a, just ready to go. <laughs> yeah. It takes about four hours to climb to the top. And that's like a methodical four hours. And then it takes usually longer than four hours to climb down. And then you gotta make sure the light bulb that you brought up doesn't break. <laughs> then you screw it in and then I guess you can drop the old one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 130 grand a day. <laughs> but it probably takes. So I'm thinking if it's 100, it's probably 130,000 per job, which mm -hmm. lasts a day. So is it a consistent 130,000 a day? I don't know. It depends on how many AM stations exactly. you got in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Great opportunity for you. Um, okay. A link in the bio if you want to apply. No, just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No link in the bio. That's my 137,000. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And then, you know how several weeks ago we were talking about that whole, <coughs> excuse me, Miami Mall incident where it was like. The aliens? Yeah, potentially okay. aliens. But there was hundreds of. Police yeah. called to it, whatever. If you take the coordinate coordinates, yeah, of the mall, of Miami Mall, okay, and you put um, like instead of like north and west, you put south, same coordinates, south and east, basically the opposite side of the globe. Oh, okay, it's Antarctica. What? It's in Antarctica. It's the opposite side. So the aliens drew, <laughs> drilled a hole through the earth right into the Miami Mall. That's Good a thing theory. they had pyramids to help them out. Yeah. <laughs> Great segue. Did <laughs> you know, now this is a rumor, so don't be, oh, you guys are idiots down below. Please do. It helps Actually, it does help with the algorithm. So if you want to say that, go for it. But did you know the supposedly. <laughs> so those words together, did you know and supposedly? Uh, did you know that supposedly NASA owns 
the rights of the interior of the Great Pyramid. What? Yeah. Like the decorative style? No, 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 no. Like, the, owns the, in, like, the interior of it. Like, controls it. Oh, NASA controls it. Controls it. Like, the, owns, not, like, the property rights, like, the actual yeah. land property, not, yeah. like, the property rights to a song. or Exactly. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, you can't license it. <laughs> All proceeds go to NASA. No, but supposedly... Oh, it's in Egypt. I know, right? Well, I mean, it's so secretive around that. So, basically, supposedly... They, the pyramids are a technological device, supposedly, that they don't want any other nations or um, individuals, I guess, uh, to have the technology that mm. it produces or generates. I mean, like you were saying a couple of weeks ago, it produces what? It was chemical factories. So that to so what me, what chemical was it making? Well, so some of the other uh, pyramids, like they've done samples on the walls, and like, oh, it produces. I, now I don't remember, but it was like a common chemical that we use today. And okay. then, like, out of the, I can't remember three or six pyramids that are there, mm -hmm. like you can uh, combine the chemicals to create other chemicals. For like one was um, to help in uh, not digging but um, mining gold. Hmm. And interesting. <clears throat> that whole honestly, that whole theory that the py Great Pyramids were potentially uh, chemical plants to generate different chemicals kind of makes a lot of sense to me. Like, yeah, it's a fascinating. So right, go ahead. With that, mm -hmm. um, I think I sent you. A, yeah, so this photo here, they're yeah, dining in like yeah, some king's pharaohs. Pharaoh Ramses the ninth, nineteen twenty-three. Okay, yeah, they're dining in the tomb of, in the pyramid. Was it a pyramid? Yeah. Okay. And it's like, well, how do you know? Like, if they're the tombs were pyramids, it's like. You might not have been dining in, you might have been dining in a chemical factory. Yeah. Yeah. I think they probably were dining in some. Yeah. Because, like, there has been evidence, there has been no evidence to show that they were ever um, tombs. You're right. Uh, tea on top of Great Pyramid of Giza. Just imagine 1935, you could have been having tea at the top of the pyramids. Crazy. What's kind of a funny story is um, have you heard of Graham Hancock? He He's like a what do they call Sounds... it? Investigative journal or an investigative okay. researcher but is like kind of an archaeologist and he has the mainstream call him fringe, but he has like he has a foot based in reality and, and a lot of his stuff is like, okay, that makes sense. Kinda like the um chemical thing. Okay. Like yeah. it's not mainstream, but it's makes sense. Yeah. Anyway, um he's an older guy and back in I don't know what year it was, he could legally climb the pyramid back then. And it was his first time and um he climbed the pyramid and i guess like people like write initials or at least did okay. like write initials at the top or whatever and um at the top he saw a name it was like g hancock which his name is graham hancock yeah and uh he went Traveler. home no he knew it was his anyway long story short he looked it up in his grandpa's like diaries and his grandpa's diary no said way. I think there was a date on it too. So he was his grandpa in like World War II or something? I can't remember what his grandpa did or why, but in his grandpa's diary, he was like, on this date, climb the Great Pyramid or whatever. Wow. So like he saw it, it wasn't like, oh my grandpa climbed this thing, I'm gonna look for his name or whatever. Right. He climbed it, he found it randomly. Right. I mean, how many Grandma Hancocks or G Hancocks. Yeah. Are Egyptians. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and Egyptians probably don't write their name at the top right. because it's 
probably in their backyard too, though. Yeah. Or, or sacred. <laughs> That's funny. But what are the odds of that? Yeah. Um, probably pretty slim. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Uh, I have this story. <laughs> Yeah, just imagine me like, Grandma, you never guess what? I climbed the pyramid. Oh, yeah. Grandpa did that a long time ago. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, man. What a disappointment. Um, have you heard about the eclipses that are eclipses? I actually have heard a little bit about it's weird stuff goes around the eclipses. <sighs> I know. And I don't honestly know what to think about it or how to think about it so it's happening i want i think april 8th i think somewhere around there yeah which for our viewers will be interesting by the time they see this it'll probably be like in three days <laughs> good luck okay <laughs> may the voice be with you <laughs> so i don't know there's so many like weird theories around it um mm -hmm. yeah have you well, heard any interesting theories on it well yeah. Um, <laughs> You're like, how deep do you want to go down the rabbit hole? <laughs> but I've heard a lot of wars have, like, started, like, around eclipses. Okay. Like, around the time frame, like, we had a lot of eclipses during World War II, Vietnam War, Civil War. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, a lot of different wars. So there's people stating that there's going to be different wars that are going to happen. Or a wars, is, there's going to be a war started. Um, when with all the tensions here in America, it's not out of the window, I but know. still a slim chance, I would say. Yeah. And like what, how long after the fact does say a war have to break out to count towards counting towards eclipse? Like for instance, say, I don't I know. have no clue. That's above my pay grade. Like if I'm the, not an eclipse person. Yeah. Like say World War II started in 19, say 40. Okay. Or 42 or something. Like, and say there was an eclipse. Like, did it just happen? You know, the war started in September and the eclipse happened in January. And it does that count? I don't or, know. <laughs> you yeah. know? Those are very good questions. Yeah. And, like, I've heard things like, I feel like everybody's trying to tie it to their narrative. Mm -hmm. And, like, I've heard biblical narratives like, oh, where it's crossing or whatever, it's happening in between the towns of um, uh, Nineveh and um, there's another town called Israel or something like in the oh, Midwest. Oh, like in Texas or something? Or in Mississippi or okay, somewhere yeah. in the Midwest, there's a town called Nineveh, Nineveh and a town called um, Israel or something. And it's happening between those points and like... It's basically, you know, God's judge is showing that he's going to be judging the U.S., right. which he might. <laughs> but it's just like, I feel like there's every sect or every group mm -hmm. can subscribe meaning to it. And I feel like if you look hard enough into it, it can probably mean whatever you want it to mean. Yeah. Well, that's probably a good segue into... The Passover. Yes. Yes. I know you, you've you been researching a lot into that, so I'll yeah. let you kind of take the reins yeah. on that one. But The red heifer thing? Yeah. So what's going on with the Passover and the red heifer? So crazy. So I can't remember. Have we talked about it at all? We've talked a little bit about it. Okay. Give me a whole rundown on yeah, it. Yeah. I'll give you yeah the rundown. <laughs> <laughs> this is so weird. Um, so basically... Um, the the red heifers in ancient times okay. there has been like ancient biblical times yes or? ancient okay. biblical times um like ancient um israel okay all the way back to moses oh wow yeah there has been since moses and to this date there has been nine red heifer sacrifices only nine in okay. 3000 years so basically and when they do a... About three every century? <coughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> so when they do a red heifer sacrifice, they um, save the ashes or some of the ashes of that red heifer. Okay. Store it away. And then when they do the next red heifer sacrifice, they mix those ashes with the old one. So after, huh. so after three, 
on the fourth one, there's three red heifer ashes okay. mixed with the fourth one, and then so on and so yeah. forth. Makes sense. So those ashes were have been stored away and then just gone missing, right? For nobody knows where the ashes are for two thousand years. Or since, okay. or since the last red heifer. probably a few, very few select people that knew, possibly. Possibly. But when the Dead Sea Scrolls were un oh. unveiled, there was, with the Dead Sea Scrolls, this canister with a okay. copper scroll in it, which copper doesn't huh. decay. <clears throat> and in that copper scroll said basically, um, like, these are the red heifer ashes, so on and so forth. Okay. Wow. So, right? So the, um, what do you call, not the priests, but what do they call them? Rabbis of today, mm -hmm. they have control and own or whatever, keep in storage those ashes at their facility or whatever. Yeah, where probably they, a very secret facility mm -hmm. somewhere. Right, exactly. So then, okay, back it up. There is... Um, prophecy that the the tenth red heifer is gonna usher in um the new temple or tabernacle. Oh, okay. So like, is this biblical prophecy like or is this more Jewish prophecy? More like yeah. That I don't know. I no 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 sorry. Beep 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 beep. Yes. As far as the prophecy of, like, when the next temple is going to be built, as far as the order of things, I believe it is biblical. Okay, so it's, like, in Isaiah or something like that? I believe so, yes. Okay, we'll have to do more yes, research and, before and we I steer heard, people wrong. <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm like, 90% sure okay. it's in there. I would like to see that verse. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. So, anyway, okay, boop. So basically, since um, the time of Christ, okay, <laughs> I'm all over the place because my brain's like... Zzz, There's zzz. so much involved. There's in so this. much involved. So the last red heifer sacrifice happened in um, 2000, or not 2000, sorry. <laughs> BC? <laughs> no. When Jesus was born. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, 2000. Or 2,000 years from now. That's why I keep getting 2,000. Uh, okay. So 1,000. Or no. <laughs> wow. Because it started 1,000 years. Ah. I know. It started 1,000 years before Christ. Mm -hmm. And then the last one was basically before Christ was alive. Like just before or? Yes, because they started building the temple. Basically, the the oh, okay. last temple wasn't very old. Yeah, because didn't when like the torn when the curtain was torn and Jesus died, or they pretty much when Jesus said, I will destroy this temple mm -hmm. and make Rebuild a new it. one. Yeah. They like said what this temple you're going to rebuild, like they're mocking him, like right. you're going to rebuild this in a day when it took us 50 years or something right. like that. And at, okay, and at that time, that temple wasn't very old, it was like yeah. 30 or 40 years old. Okay, so that red heifer sacrifice is like happened when they 30 finished years. the temple or when they started the temple. That I don't know. Okay, so but just in the grand scheme of things, the temple wasn't very old at that time. When the last, yeah, basically the last red he heifer sacrifice happened, and then they re and they built that temple. Okay, that got destroyed, right? Mm -hmm. Prophecy: the new red heifer, the new red heifer. When the <laughs> tenth red heifer happens, they're gonna rebuild the okay. new temple. And to find these red heifers is not just like going out finding a red cow and slaughtering it. It's like they have to be well, perfect. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, mm -hmm. how hard is it to really find a red heifer in Ireland? <laughs> right. <laughs> but these red heifers have to be, like, the hoofs have to be perfect. Oh, and really? Hoofs have to be perfect. Their legs have to be the exact same length, like all four of them. They can't have more than one off-colored hair. So, like, if it has... So you got, like... One, like two strikes and you're out. Right. Wow. If it has 
two white hairs on it anywhere, it's worthless. It's, Imagine being that. Uh, to a live cow. Yes, to a live cow. Could you, like a little toothpick? I don't know. Okay. So then, also, it can ha- it can never be yoked. Which, okay. like, you think, like, yoke like, plowing, mm-hmm. but also mean like, you can't have a rope around it, ever. You can't have a rope around yeah, it? Yeah, that doesn't count, or whatever. How do they get it up onto the sacrifice? Do I, they shoe it on? I don't know. Um, and then you cannot, um, no one can, ha- no one can never, wow, no one can lean on it. So when you're checking those hairs, you can't be, like, leaning up yeah. against it, like, okay. Yeah. You're just like... It's like you have to be so careful. It's like the oh intern just kind of like, oh, you know? right. Or like you trip and fall. Like you're, I don't know. The like, thing's moving around. What are these rabbis doing <laughs> here in this here country? <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's like, anyway, wow. long story short. So they've been looking for a red heifer for the last 2,000 years, basically. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah. And, well, I guess if you didn't have the ashes either. Right. And there's a lot of other things. So basically, the whole point you of this... have a temple that was going to come in. Right. So the whole point of the red heifer is they sacrifice the red heifer, which technically cleanses the people and the tools that are going to be implemented in and on the temple, of rebuilding the temple. Okay. So that's why you cleanse it so they can build it, basically. Okay. So the sacrifice happens before. Right. Okay. But you have to have all the tools and elements before, too. So for the last hundred plus years or hundreds of years, they've been gathering the tools or building the tools they need, like okay. the menorahs and the... I don't, wow. I don't know of all the tools exactly. Well, they've, been, they've been ready. They've been, yeah, and they, and all these tools are very, it has to be perfect and specific, hmm. and anyway, so that being said, in Texas, there was this guy that um, had a ranch with red heifers on it, Okay, and um, supposedly there's some, re- it got word to um, some, like, Jewish rabbi in the States, Okay, and, like, I heard this from a podcast from another guy that knew that re- that rabbi guy. Oh wow! So he and this guy was like into biblical prophecies, and he knew it, and was like, "Hey, we're having the rabbis from Israel come over to check out this um, these red heifers because and, you know he knew the whole story with the yeah. red heifers, so he was excited to be potentially part of history." So this was happening. And this guy that was like the the youth pastor of this other church that knew this guy, right? Mm-hmm. He was excited. He was golfing with his dad, and he was telling him like, "Oh, this is super exciting! These you know rabbis, red heifers, and, and everything." The, the dad was super excited for him, mm-hmm. and the dad calls his best friend the next day to tell him, <laughs> "My goodness, like that his son's gonna be able to go observe this cool thing happening." And the dad's best friend owns a ranch. And okay. that ranch, he, all he breeds is red heifers. That's a coin kadink. Right? And the guy was like, oh, this is... He's like, well, why don't they come over here to my ranch and look for him? And he's like, well, I guess they could. I don't know. I don't know the right. logistics of it all. So it happened that same day that the dad was talking to um, him. Mm-hmm. The other ranch got word that it was these rabbis from Israel coming over to check out the cow for the thing and basically got spooked and, like, freaked out and was like, no, I don't want anything to do with this. Yeah, okay. He canceled. Rabbis are already in flight, basically, coming over to the U.S. The rabbi guy here that kind of sort of set it up was like... um now what because they're in flight <laughs> and the, the oops s- my bad the son that was talking to his dad mm-hmm. was like let's go take him to this ranch oh wow the dad's ranch or the dad's friend's Friend. ranch yeah and so they ran out and did a quick search they kind of knew what they were looking for mm-hmm. roughly 
you know? And they're like, okay, it looks like there could be candidates. Red cow, good. Yeah. <laughs> so they didn't even tell oh, wow. the, the rabbis coming over that they switched ranches. <laughs> and they just took him to this other ranch. And come to find out, they found seven cows of red heifers that are... That meet uh, the perfection that, criteria. Yeah, that meet the perfection criteria or like wow. were candidates for it. And these red heifers, they have to, they fall into like a certain age bracket if they get too old. Like oh, no joke. beyond like two years, I think it is, or three years, then they fall out of eligibility. So they could be perfect, but wow. oh, they're three and a half years. Nope. So they, And they can't be too young either. <laughs> it's like, there's so many like little, uh, 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 uh. So they found seven of them on this ranch. And as this whole inspection process was taking, you know, forever. Mm -hmm. And one of the rabbis, the more official ones, uh, sat down and was talking to this guy, the, the son, mm -hmm. and was saying, just randomly telling him, like, the story of the last red heifer, of the ninth one. <coughs> And how they found the ninth red heifer and everything. And so he was saying, he he read the story like from a thousand, a thousand okay. years ago or yeah, whatever. 2000. Because they have the books. Because they the squirrels. have everything. <laughs> um, he was telling the story how like they, um, these rabbis, they bought, uh, they were looking for a diamond for the breastplate. Uh, okay, they have 12 jewels and the the priest that sacrificed the red heifer has a breastplate with like 12 jewels in it, one of them is diamond. And um, they found the diamond dealer and it was a Gentile, so a non-Jew. Okay. And um, they were they bartered a price for it and the, the guy was like, oh, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you. And they're like, no, let's just do the deal now because we want to be done with it and get it. And he's like, uh, no, come back tomorrow. <laughs> and then they kept bartering, well, we'll give you more money if we can just have it now. Right. And then he's like, no, no, no. Anyway, they leave and come back tomorrow. And the guy gives it to him for the original price. Yeah. And the guy was like, uh, the rabbi was like, why do we have to wait till tomorrow? He's like, oh, because my dad in the back was sleeping. And he, when he sleeps, he keeps the key underneath his head or whatever. And he mm. didn't want to wake his dad up to <laughs> sell this thing. So he actually sold it to him for the original price. And the oh, rabbi, wow. rabbis were impressed that yeah. they basically kept his word, kept the same price, and he said, um, the, the red heifer is going to come from you. Like, like prophesied sort huh. of to him. Interesting. So then, like, a couple years later, when they were, like, ready for the red heifer, mm -hmm. sure enough, they found it from this the same jeweler guy. Yeah. So nowadays time, the rabbi is telling the son of the um the father right with the oh, friend <laughs> that um the the cows and he was saying like oh, i don't even know why i was telling you a story just whatever interesting yeah and he was like that's so weird because the guy that owns these cows his like actual profession he does is diamond jeweler really yeah <laughs> and they're like oh wow <laughs> Do they need a diamond? <laughs> <laughs> Assuming they already have that. <laughs> but um, it's just all these weird little coincidences that yeah. are falling into place. So anyway, there were seven original red heifers, um, and they basically packaged them all up somehow. I don't know how they did it, and have shipped them back to Israel. Oh, bubble wrap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure it's not laying on it. Though. Right. Um, so in the meantime, uh, two of them have fallen out of contention. Don't know why. Okay. Maybe somebody fell found on them. Found a second them. hair. Found a second hair. <laughs> Bumped so, on the plane. We know two of them have fallen out. Maybe two other ones. So we know that there's at least three that are still eligible. Okay. Out of the seven. And those guys are like hidden away. Like until this time. So basically... They want to sacrifice this red heifer, and the age, we're approaching the age limit. So by the end of this year, all of the red heifers are going to be too old. Yeah, interesting. So it has to happen, I think it's like by September. But. Wow. Yeah. That's soon. 
that soon, but we are coming upon the Easter season, mm -hmm. and their goal is to sacrifice it now during Easter or during the Passover. During the Passover, which is like from the 22nd to basically the end of the week, um, okay. 30th or something. Yeah, I know Good Friday is the 29th, I think. I think it is. Yes, yeah. I think past tw 22nd to the 29th. Mm -hmm. I know 22nd is one of the number. I think it is the 29th. Okay. So between the Passover dates, um, that's when their goal is to sacrifice mm -hmm. it. And they've already built the altar thing. Oh, wow. It's already built. You, you can see pictures of it. And basically the, the state of Israel knows now like what's going on and it is like, helping provide security for this whole thing. They want to televise the whole event, which <laughs> is going to be a huge thing. Like, like everybody's going to be watching slash um, also like tons of people are going to want to witness it too and come in. So the theory is realistically, they're probably just going to do it and then show the footage after the fact. Mm -hmm. Like, and not tell people, we're doing it on the 22nd at this time, at this date, you know. Right, but you know people are just going to be like, is it happening? Yeah, because they're afraid of, like, terrorist activity as far as, mm -hmm. like, if they give us exact date and time, then there, there the will bomb. be. <laughs> yeah, there will be conflict. Yeah. So they're thinking that they'll probably just do it and then be like, here it is, it happened. Crazy. And then, so according to, I don't, know how true so according to these same sources or whatever because in my mind it's like well how long does it take to build a temple or whatever supposedly it doesn't have to be a rock stone temple it can be like a tabernacle type. Like, like a tabernacle is like the tent oh but, wow like just fabric yeah and supposedly they've already built that like, but isn't the Dome of the Rock over where it's supposed to go? Yes. So that's kind of... I've heard gray stuff around that. So that's gray, too, because it, they're because like... It's not necessarily... Like, I've heard where the Dome of the Rock is supposedly where the Temple Mount was. But mm -hmm. then I've also heard that that's where they thought at the beginning. But now they think it's at another location. Mm. So, so that whole thing with the Dome of the Rock, don't know about. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like, and then from there, when once they had their temple, tabernacle, whatever built, mm -hmm. then it's like when they are consistently doing sacrifices on that altar, that's when other stuff can start happening. Okay. Supposedly. Yeah. So... Long story. You want Sorry. to know? I've heard oh. rumors. Okay. So You've heard rumors. remember when, um, what is it called? So remember when Hamas attacked Israel? Mm -hmm. They ran across the border, kidnapped a bunch of people, and ran back across. Yes. <laughs> Supposedly, they knew about the red heifers and about their whole plan to sacrifice the red heifers. Yeah. And they were trying to prevent that. Wow. Because if they start building the temple and they supposedly think that the temple is where the Dome of the Rock is, right. that's a sacred place for them. Yeah. And that pretty much, that's a holy war right there between those two. Right. Like, religions. Right. Which, that's another thing with, like, biblical prophecy where they're saying, basically, like, all the nations from the East and West and whatever are going to, mm -hmm. like, come in on yeah. Israel. They were saying, like, basically all those nations are Muslim nations. And somebody was saying, like, if that temple is destroyed, like, there's no doubt, like, they will all. Because that is like a, yeah. yeah. So it's like, oh, well, that kind of well, makes sense. What, is it a hundred million man army or 200 million man army prophesied coming from the east, which China has? That was 200, yeah. 200 million. Yeah. Like, what, there's 300 million people, 350 million people living in the United States? That's like all of America just marching. 
right. man, woman, and child, old, young. Wow. Like crazy. It is the crazy. amount of people China has in their military. Right. It's just crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, huh. <laughs> but I mean, moving that amount of people, like, the logistics How? of that? Yeah. Like, you're probably sending at least a couple of those people marching by foot. And then yeah. you have, like, horsemen coming from up north, which, I mean, that could have been trying to describe in their time frame, like, a tank or whatever, like, a ch yeah. horseless chariot, like, horsemen or whatever. Yeah. But, I mean, that could be, or it could be, an EMP hits, all of our equipment that we use isn't usable. So now right. we have people marching from the east and horsemen from wow. Russia coming down, you know? That's crazy. Like, yeah. There's so many different things that it could be mm -hmm. that, I mean, you'll never know until it happens. Right. That's crazy. And I was, I was watching something. It was like some person wrote a book on like... What was Armageddon? It? No, it was nuclear warfare yeah. and, and stuff like that. And basically, and then someone was interviewing her, and they were saying that basically if one nuke goes off, like by a, a nation, like a bigger nation, like... Yeah, if it's not like a terrorist organization yeah. or something it's like that. It's basically Armageddon. It's... All the nukes are going off. Like, yeah. it's no sense in, like, say, uh, Russia or whatever sending one nuke. They're not going to send one nuke. They're going to send all, however many thousand they right. have, all at once. And hope that some hit. Because Yeah. And what's crazy, <laughs> so the interview is like, well, we have, like, um, missile defense systems, like, to, like, shoot down. And she's like, no, like... When you think of missile defense system, you think of like Israel's um, Iron Dome yeah. or whatever. And they're like, we don't have that. Basically, <laughs> she was saying the missile defense system that we supposedly have mm -hmm. to shoot, that would be able to shoot these rockets down, we've got 44 missiles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If they've got a thousand something. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, you're thinking about missiles coming across the ocean pretty much. Yeah, and I mean to be honest, maybe we don't have so many of them because we have the what was it Reagan I think started it with the laser defense. Yeah, that's what another thing is. Honestly, I think we're beyond missile defense systems, mm -hmm. and we're on to more lasers and stuff like that. Yeah, but, I mean, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that um, we have this facility up in. Alaska and Harp. Yeah. Did we already talk about a it? Little a little bit. bit? Yeah. But yeah. That has a bunch of diesel generators that creates massive amount of electricity and they use it to study the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But when Kim Jong un of North Korea was um testing his missiles, mm -hmm. um that he he shot up and they just pretty much fell back down and mm. pretty much were duds. Mm. And during that time, the study of the atmosphere in Alaska went from studying the atmosphere yeah. to not being like colleges couldn't access it. Like it was <laughs> like probably military control, yeah. like going in there and using it for their use. That's crazy. Be like, boink, boink. Yeah. And then have you also heard or seen those like videos of the lasers in the North Pole just? bouncing around mm, mm -hmm. like remember when yeah. that was happening yeah i forgot it's about like, that like was, was china trying to figure out how to aim the thing he's like phew, phew, phew. and huh. you need it color so you can see where it's going you know yeah interesting huh yeah I forgot about that yeah like just imagine if you have a little earthquake mm -hmm. and sh you have that <laughs> <laughs> right man you're missing the satellite altogether. Crazy. Yeah, I, I don't know what to think about all that. Yeah. Like, because they were saying um, of the... 
So we have, what do they call it? The triad, like missile def... Yeah. You're in triad. I know. Missile defense system, or not missile defense, a nuclear deterrent system. Basically, we have ICBMs, um, subs, and aircraft. Okay. And basically, like, in the subs, how many do we have, like... Yeah, nine. the submarines can hold a lot of a lot. ICBMs. I think they can launch like ninety nukes in like a minute or something like that, which is they probably insane. sink like twenty feet. <laughs> well, well, these these missiles or whatever come out of the subs. Mm -hmm. They hold three nukes inside of that that can be per missile. Yes, or some of them. Okay, or, and basically when they launch that one, the ICBM or whatever it is launches up and then three nukes come out of that oh. that can hit three different targets from there oh my goodness <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and like the nukes that they were talking about um what did they call it uh it's like a hundred times the size of like what happened in hiroshima yeah. or whatever like the fire just the fireball alone just the fireball yeah is like four and a half miles. So is it long. a nuclear bomb or an atom bomb at that point? Oh, what they call it? It was. What was um? Was the atom bomb? What was in uh, Hiroshima? No, that was an. Oh, I think we dropped nuclear bombs on Japan, oh. and then after the war, we did more research and studies and figured out the um, atom bomb. Which pretty much you need a nuclear bomb to set off the explosion. Yes, of that's an atom what bomb. these are. It was like the way that she was describing it was the nuclear bomb or the atom bomb, whatever mm -hmm. it was, was basically the fuse to the the actual. <laughs> that's crazy. Yes. <laughs> anyway, it was the just the fireball alone was four and a half miles of wow sheer like nothing survives like. Dust, yeah, ashes, exactly. And then you have the shock fall, wave, shock yeah. wave, and then the fallout, and then the EMP. It's right, insanity. Yeah. I remember they're doing some tests. Well, I don't really remember, but they pretty much did tests on islands. They mm. pretty much went by and just like evacuated everyone from these islands, mm -hmm. and then dropped the bomb, and it was just like the whole island just gone. Man, yeah, there there was one test I think I saw a video on where it was like they thought they were far enough away, and <laughs> and like they no one like died, but it was like oh we should have backed up more type of situation. Like the realization that <laughs> yeah. I miscalculated yeah. and it could have been a whole lot worse. Yeah, <laughs> it was like they got some of the shock wave right. versus like it could have should have been back. Added another factor of safety <laughs> on that. <laughs> It's insane, Man. and but this li this lady that wrote the book on it or whatever was saying like they did so much documentation on how nuclear bombs would basically work in the world and the fallout basically to mm. understand it and to then like publish it to almost like be like this is why we should never do it type of thing. Oh, uh, okay. And, like, they know precisely the exact distance of how far, um, like, a pine tree can be before it catches on fire. And, like, how close uh, a 1950s car's upholstery will burn. Wow. Like, down to the detail of everything. Of, Crazy. Yeah. Man. And during the Cold War, didn't we have, like, each like America and Russia, they we all had enough like um nuclear weapons to like destroy the earth like three times over. I think so. Like we the probably earth. still do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we yeah. Right. And then we created this treaty that like <laughs> supposedly each side abides by. On paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. But, the, yeah, the sad thing is that America doesn't have any tactical nukes, or Russia has tactical nukes. Yeah. So Russia can use a tactical nuke to like hit a small little area, 
where if we were to drop one of our bombs, it's just massive. Yeah. <laughs> we're just like, we're serious, like, boom, boom, we don't care if you're done. <laughs> Russia's just like, that's a, like, yeah. we might have the size of the bomb that the nuclear bomb yeah. would do. Like a hydrogen but, bomb or something. Well, not a hydrogen. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. The, yeah, like we have this Those massive are huge bomb. Too. Yeah. I don't know all my bombs, but. but. <laughs> Yeah, it, I don't know. I keep saying I don't know because it's it's yeah. weird to think about the whole thing. Yeah, and then to think about like bombs, nuclear bombs getting moved back and forth and sold. Like we have nuclear bombs that went missing. I think there's one in like a river somewhere that we're just like, we don't know where it's at. I either like get in a river. <laughs> it fell off a boat or something. And then like another one in the ocean somewhere. I think Russia. Like how many of them do you think <laughs> have been sold to other countries that we don't know? In terrorist organizations. Yeah. Like, I mean if you really think about it, like how many do you think has like how much gold do you think we really have in Fort Knox? Yeah. Like, do you think we actually possess all the gold that we used to possess? Probably not. Why, why do you think know. we went to the fiat currency? Right. Man. I just, uh. And Fort Knox is more of a symbol or a trick, a Trojan horse. <laughs> Come attack Fort Knox. Yeah. Where is Fort Knox? I have no clue. Next week. Next week. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for joining Conspiracy Crypto Pirates, and we'll see you next week. Adios.